Bloody greetings, my slashaholics. The library is now open. Tonight's sinister selection will again come from the twisted mind of the paranormologist, who has submitted a couple of his creepypastas that I've narrated so far. But tonight will be a little different. This will not be your normal creepypasta story reading. Instead, the paranormologist has shared with me a couple twisted works of poetry. Enjoy. My name is Annie Sugarpill. I'm eight years old today. My family is so kind to me, but I don't want to stay. Of talents I have very few, my tries are often vain. But if I close my eyes and think, they start to go insane. Mother's mind was quite the tack, yet easiest to break. And while she's knitting in the chair, her body starts to shake. Her shoulders hunch, her eyes roll back, her lips begin to curl. And if I think about her thoughts, her sanity unfurls. Hours pass, and after that, I find her in the corner, working at her face with knives, her smile growing warmer. Father's next, he's in the shed. I see him just by thinking. And if I trip his wartime fears, he starts to think he's sinking. He's lost at sea, he's going down, the scene is awfully real. And though the shed is made of wood, it might as well be still. He thinks he's pounding at the hatch, he sees the textured hole, but actually he strikes his head, again against the wall. On and on and on it goes, so very, very long. Until there's nothing left up there but endless pretty songs. Brothers in his bedroom, the signal's strong and clear. He shouldn't have divulged to me his deepest, darkest fears. He sees them closing in on him. He sees them slink and crawl. The joke is that it's only him who sees them there at all. They're climbing through the windows. They're sliding through the clefts. And in an empty room he screams. Until there's nothing left. Sister's writing poetry. She really is quite good. But I could give her mind a tweak. And I really think I should. Soon she's writing on the wall. Ideas are coming flood. Her fingers working as a pen. The ink instead, her blood. She writes for hours, crazy things. Though to her it all makes sense. And when her writing tools go dry, she makes herself dispense. Now baby's still asleeping, but when I tap inside, his mind is all of mush I see, a hell of its own kind. A wakeless sleep he stays within, an abyss within the brain. He'll be in here for years and years. There's nothing left to change. The house is dark, the hour's late, yet I am still awake. Awake inside this house of loons, from which no sane escape.
Now Timmy sleeps with his blankets pulled tight, dreading the things that go bump in the night. Today he is but eight, tomorrow he'll be nine. See, tonight it will change, not that he can deny. And as he awaits with little for sight, his eyes cannot help but dart left and right. For what should he fear much more greatly than an unwelcome visit from the birthday man? Alas, there is something there in the closet, a thing which holds gently a cake made of chocolate. On it are candles, one more than eight. It's Timmy's new age, now it's too late. To stop what is coming, he knows why it's here. The birthday man wants nothing more than a year. And as this thing nears, its eyes glowing bright, Timmy can see more than he wants to, all right. Its fingers are sharp, and its smile is wide. That hat is quite long, but so is its stride. Its arms are all striped, and so are the legs. And as it gets closer, for his life Timmy begs. You are young, yet so filled with dread, says the birthday man now at the edge of the bed. I mean you no harm right now anyway but a year has gone by and thus a birthday the thing pulls a clock right out of its jacket all around it are numbers 80 exactly and as if the stars of fate have aligned a hand ticks quickly from eight right to nine please don't do this says timmy to he Please don't allow me to reach the A.D. Oh, you don't understand, says this thing to the boy. This isn't my fault, just for me to enjoy. I don't decide when and where you will die. I only remind you, you'll run out of time. But what happens then, Timmy quickly declares. What happens when the clock gets over to there? The question of ages, says the thing very slow. But after that point, how on earth should I know? Your time will be up, and then you'll be gone. You've played all your cards. I'm sorry, my son. Timmy thinks for a while, and he gets quite depressed. What with pondering how much time, how much time he's got left. To do what he wants and have fun for a while, even though slowly he's going senile. But birthdays are happy, birthdays are fun. Why should I celebrate if my life's down by one? Ah, are you clever, says the birthday man, yes. Now you see what no one else will confess. Birthdays celebrate the life of a man, but time is something not one can withstand. And thus we're reminded of your first complete breath. But not only that, you're closer to death. See, this is what your friends and your foes have in common. To them it is joyous and also quite solemn. Then why are you here? asked Timmy with a frown. Are you just here to scare me, you clown? Not here to scare, I'm here with the deal. For what is a birthday without a sweet, harmless meal? The birthday man hands him the chocolatey cake. But what once seemed delicious is a symbol of fate. I don't want this, says Timmy, the math I have done. To take nine from eighty is but seventy-one. That's all I have left. Those are the stakes. I have no reason to rejoice with you or your cake. Yes, that is true, says the thing with great relish. But you've forgotten your one, your one birthday wish. Anything, huh? Timmy ponders his one. Anything I want without restrictions? 
The birthday man looks at him with those glowing red eyes and says, though I might add, a word to the wise. Wishes for good are arguably best, as wishes for evil are not quite as blessed. See, wishes, my boy, can be anything really. Best not to waste them on things that are silly. There have been many, I know, who wished against time. For eternal life, that is, there's no greater crime. So while you waste away with your days that are numbered, know someone out there will miss out on that slumber. To pass like a ghost while your friends fade away, while relatives wither and memories decay. To weep o'er and o'er with no end to be seen, and to experience peace, but only in dreams. These are the signs of a tormented soul, not sleep that is endless and painlessly so. So ask yourself this, is all that you wish to escape from a coffin? Because there are some things worse than being forgotten. Okay, Slashaholics, this has been Creepy Readings number six. Two poems by the Paranormologist narrated by me. Please check the description and the title cards in the video for a link to the Paranormologist's Facebook page for plenty more of his great, great creepy stories. Guys, I'll be back very soon with the next edition of Creepy Readings. Please let me know in the comment section below what you thought of tonight's creepy reading, if you enjoyed these poems, uh, if you would be interested in me doing more of these creepy poems in the future, alongside the creepy pasta readings. Alright guys, until next time, this has been your friendly neighborhood 80s slasher librarian saying, thanks for listening, and next time your birthday rolls around, expect a visit from the birthday man. <laughs>